morning, everyone. Welcome to Vision Church of Lockhart. Glad to see you this morning. I hope everybody's doing okay this morning. And uh, uh, it's Fourth of July weekend. Amen. Everybody's out. <laughs> but thank you for coming and joining us in worship. And uh, let's give God glo the glory this morning. Amen. God is good. God is good to us. And uh, I just want to take a little time just to thank those who have served our country. Amen. Amen. I think Richard and uh, uh, your mom's not here. Yeah. Thank you all. And uh, Grace, too. I forgot about Grace. Thank you so much. Uh, thank God that we live in a free country. Amen. And God, we trust. Amen. And, uh, you know, God is, God is good. Let's go to the scripture. All the time, he is good, yes. The spirit of the, of the, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me, amen, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Amen. Do you feel, are you brokenhearted this morning? Let God work in you, amen. Let him enter your heart, and uh, he is good to us. He is good. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Do you feel bound this morning? Amen. God, God wants to, to take those chains or whatever's going on in your life, you know. He wants to work those out. You know, there's times when you may not feel like he's there, but he's there. He's there working in you, working in your life. And... Uh, um, you got to just uh, get into the word and uh, and just persevere and just, you know, he doesn't always get us out of, of things, but even, you know, through our weaknesses, we are strong, the Bible says, amen. amen. As long as we stay in him and he'll stay in us, amen, right. and he'll help us through, you know, so... Uh, who the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, right. let's worship today and uh, let's free our minds this morning and focus on God. And let's praise him this morning for all the good things that he has done in us. Amen. That he has done for us. He has done great things. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your your word, Father God, and we thank you for your promise, Father God, that you never leave us nor forsake us, Father. And Lord, and uh, Lord, who the sun sets free is free indeed. And we just, we just thank you, Lord, for just freeing us and uh, and Lord, just loving on us, Father God. And and uh, Father God, we just give you all the honor this morning and all the praise and all the glory, Father God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Everybody, let's stand. You know, in case you couldn't tell, Richard was excited. You know, the same, the same power that, that rose Jesus from the dead, we have inside of us. And if we could just get a hold of that truth and know that we know that God is real, that God's word is life, we have it all through Jesus. So today as we sing, you know, it just happens to be that a few of these songs talk about the freedom. We have freedom in Jesus. Amen. You know, when we accept him as our Lord and personal Savior, we're walking in him. Guess what? Our spirit is sealed. We are his forever. Eternity is real, and so is hell. So let's just worship today like Richard said. Let every, let put everything aside. You know, as long as you have breath and you're here today, you all have a purpose. There is, there is no coincidence. Amen. You are here today for such a time as this. And like I always said, this is the, the closest thing to heaven on earth. Let's just praise him. He is worthy to be praised.
of it all. For from you all all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory again. You are worthy of it all. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. To God be the glory. Good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning and welcome. If Y'all be sure to go and tell our visitors hello and introduce yourself and tell them your name and welcome them to our humble abode in the mighty name of Jesus. So, uh, one reminder is today is Communion Sunday, so prepare yourselves. You know, ask God, Lord, forgive me. Uh, count me worthy to receive your body and blood uh, later on today. Um, how's everybody doing? Ready for some? Doing fine? Doing okay? Doing good? It's good to see everyone. Um, we have a special guest speaker today. Y'all will enjoy that, I'm sure, without a doubt, as she brings the Word of God. I got a little bit of real life for you. Let me see if I can find it. Now, oh, I got a scripture reference for that. I didn't know I had that. Let's take a peek. Romans 8, 13. Let's see what it says. All right. Romans 8, 13. 
Romans 8.13. Come on down. Let's see what the Word says about that. Okay. I'm going to read it, and I don't know if it goes along with that script, that, that uh, real-life thing I'm going to tell you, but let's just take a step of faith. Romans 8.13, For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you live through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. All right. Now, let me tell you what I was going to tell you. This is my, my real life thing that I like to share with y'all. Usually it's stuff that happens. And then when I'm asking the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, what, give me the words to speak tomorrow. Not my your words, your words. And this is what he gave me today. And it's a note that I made in my Bible years ago after hearing someone preach about it. And I want to share it with you because this, this is real life. And it says, don't let Satan pull you into the flesh realm or he will win. Keep him in the spirit realm and he can't win. And what this is, it has to do with dealing with things. Maybe it's people. Maybe it's a job. Maybe it's a thing. And you're dealing with that enemy. And if you let him pull you into that flesh realm, he's got you beat going to beat you down but if you keep him in the spirit realm he cannot win and the way you do that is by bringing it to the Lord Lord I need you to take care of this situation here I told so and so so and so please give me some help I need resolution that's it put it leave it alone give it to the Lord and just watch the Lord work on your behalf but if you let that devil pull you into that spirit realm and you go over there start button heads with people guess what he got you whooped and uh, you got it. That's that's the whole thing. You got to keep him in the spirit realm so you can exercise the victory that God gave you when He died on the cross, and Jesus beat the devil and He defeated him. Um, okay, you may want to write that down in your Bible. One day you may need to refer to that. That's why I got it right here. Don't let Satan pull you into the flesh realm, or he will win. Keep him in the spirit realm, and he cannot win. And the scripture reference I read it to you. I, I don't see a lot of. A lot of, uh, you know, uh, transferable thought or process on that. But, hey, that's what it says here. So that's it. You know, it doesn't always, it's not always plain black and white, you know, hits you upside the head. Oh, sometimes you just got to take it in faith. And a lot of times the word is given to us through faith, through the Holy Ghost or through the reading of the word or through that small, still voice that God speaks to you. So let's move along. This is the time of day that we collect tithing offering. And uh, as usual, we will refer to Malachi 3, 10, and 11. All right. And here we go. Malachi 3, 10, and 11. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. You know, it's like that. That uh, vine stuff and then fruit stuff. You just got to receive it in faith. You're like, okay, what are they talking about? Well, literally, they're talking about grape vines and things like that. But how does it apply to us? Well, don't know. But it probably has something to do with your money and your job and your prosperity and the food you eat and the provision that God makes for you. You got to receive it in faith and let God show you some of these things. Okay, there you go. Now you have it. Please bring your tithing over into the front and put them in the basket if let's, you have some. Let's everybody stand while we bring the offering and just do a little patriotic song about God blessing America. God bless America. Here we go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless, bless America.
FYI, you young folks ought to know that song by heart. Us old folks, or little older folks, we do know it because we were trained that way. You got to be trained. You got to know this place you're standing is a blessing from God. That's all there is to it. There's no two ways about it. You know, just look at a map sometime. You know, some of them countries like, like Russia, for instance, it's all snow. Who wants to live in the snow morning, noon, and night? And Eastern Europe's a little bit different, you know, Russia, that portion of it. But, you know, there's places that aren't very appealing. I don't know about you, but I, I don't want to live in a desert uh, or in the freezing snow. It's too cold. Here we got a little heat, but, you know, we got air conditioning and we can get by with that. Let's move on. Okay, we're going to pray for the offering now and the tithes. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, we thank you and we praise you for these tithing offerings. We offer them up to you. We ask you to bless them and bless the giver in the mighty name of Jesus. Use this money for your will. Let your will be done. In the mighty name of Jesus, we just thank you and praise you and we give it all to you. Amen and amen. Okay, let's see. Announcements. We're going to do some announcements. All right. Here we go. All right, here we go. Okay, announcements. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Visit us online at vclockhart.com. Wednesday night Bible study. Adult class, 7 p.m., The True Nature of God is the current uh, study. Also, on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, we have classes for the youth and the children, 7 p.m. Youth camp, July 9th through the 12th. The theme is, This Changes Everything. Where? Camp Sequoia in Hunt, Texas. Hunt, Texas. The cost is $120. If interested in going, please get with Pastor Sandra as soon as possible, as I'm sure that date, yep, July 9th is coming up fast. Okay, Baptism Sunday, July 30th. If you're interested in being baptized, please let pastors know. Uh, we'll also be having a combined service at 10 a.m., so there won't be a 9 and 11, it'll be 10. And we'll have food and fellowship following. Contact Chrisella to let her know what you can bring for the potluck. Uh, English service is at 9 o'clock on a normal day and on a normal Sunday. And Spanish service is at 11 o'clock on a normal Sunday. All right, thus concludes the announcements. Looks like it's time for us to welcome Pastor Sandra as she comes to bring the word. Hey, can y'all hear me? There we go. All right. Good morning. Y'all in trouble. I brought all this. No, I'm just kidding. Y'all going to be here a couple of hours. I'm teasing. It's good to see everybody this morning. Uh, it's good to see everybody this morning. Hallelujah. Are y'all awake this morning? I don't know. I don't believe y'all. Are y'all awake this morning? Amen. All right. That sounded a little better. I see some head shaking over there. Well, it's good to see y'all this morning. This is the 4th of July weekend, and it's a time of celebration, correct? As we've been saying, we have our freedoms and just to have the liberty to worship God and to be in the house this morning. And you know what? We don't have to worry about anything, do we? And as I've referred to this many times before, as I've talked about that our freedom, we take for granted sometimes that we don't have the to worry about anybody busting in with guns and stuff and, and taking us down for gathering together in the house of the Lord. And I'm honored and privileged and thank the Lord for that. And so uh, I don't want to take it for granted. And I don't take for granted this time I have with y'all this morning. I thank Pastor Sally for allowing me to be here with you guys and to share um, what God has put on my heart, which, uh, you know, it goes with the communion this morning that we're having. So I hope y'all are blessed this morning. All right, let me open up in prayer and then we'll get started. Thank you, Lord. Father, once again, I'm just grateful to be here with uh, 
in your house. And I just pray, Father, that the Holy Spirit would move and have his way this morning as we get into your word. May a seed be planted. May hearts be changed. May your presence be felt this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, this morning, sorry, I'm going to read from Exodus. We're going to go Old Testament this morning. We're going to go to Exodus chapter 16. I titled it, What Is It? And y'all will find out why I titled it, What Is It? All right, here we have this morning, we have Moses and the Israelites. Now, they have just gone through the Red Sea, and they have come to a place now where they're, they have journeyed into Elam. In verse 16, I mean, chapter 16, verse 1. And all the con- on the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and in Sinai. And of the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt, then the whole congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said to them, Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. <laughs> I'm just reading, I'm thinking. When, they, when we sat by the posts, the pots and meats, and when we ate bread to the full, for you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill us, this whole assembly, with hunger. <laughs> All right, you're wondering, why did she start this way? Well, this is the beginning of this chapter. Here we have the Israelites. They have just gone through the Red Sea, like I said. They were... They come to a place now where they're getting hungry. And now they're complaining that why to Moses and Aaron, why did you bring us out here just to kill us? Have you felt that way that why have I done this? Why did I do this? It's not, I'm not getting anything out of this. We're just here and we're going to die now. So Moses is there, and these people are complaining that they're hungry, and they're actually thinking about when they were in Egypt, they might as well have just stayed there and died. They feel no hope. And so they're there, and they're complaining, and they're just telling Moses, you know, you might as well just have just left us here, uh, there, and, and die. What was the point? Now, I was just thinking this. They had just got through going through the Red Sea. They just had seen a miracle happen. And yet, their faith and their doubt all of a sudden turned. And before that, the chapter before, they were singing and worshiping and just having a good old time under the Lord because of what he did for them. He, he delivered them from the hands of the Egyptians. Well, now all the excitement's gone. I don't know, have y'all ever had victory over something in your life before? And you're like, yes, thank you, Lord. That was awesome. I thank you. It was great. I couldn't have done it without you, Lord. And you're doing good, right? You're going months, happy, cloud nine. Everything's looking good. And then all of a sudden, something happens, and you're like, oh, my gosh, that's it. I'm dead. I might as well just die now, right? We can turn on a dime. We go from celebrating, happy, to all of a sudden, doom and gloom. Well, you just have to look outside and turn on the TV or whatever, and we just all of a sudden, our spirit, (laughs) right, our attitude just gets all gloomy because of what we're seeing out there. It becomes like, what is going on? Everybody has lost their mind. Well, here we have Moses, and he's listening to these people, and he so he thinks, well, all right, I got to take this to the Lord. And, you know, as a good pastor, he brings his people before the Lord. Y'all know y'all have some good pastors, right? Amen. They pray for y'all all the time. 
I pray for y'all because I'm with them sometimes when we pray for you guys. So, And that's what a pastor does. So Moses is like, all right, I hear you. So he goes to the Lord. And then the Lord comes to Moses and he says, Behold, I will rain bread down from heaven and your people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day. And I will test whether they will walk in my law or not. So God says, all right, I'm going to rain down some stuff for your people. And I'm going to see how well they listen. If they're going to abide by his law. You know, a lot of times the Lord would do things just to see what will we do. Are you going to be grateful? Or are you going to be like, it's about time, Lord. <laughs> I've been waiting forever. I about died here if you wouldn't have come along. No. So they woke up the next day. So then we read down a little further. He, then verse 9, it says, Then Moses and Aaron said to all the children of Israel at that evening, You shall know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, for he hears your complaints against the Lord. <laughs> and then he goes on to say, But why are you complaining to me? You know, that's just like people sometimes, right? When we're angry about something, we take it out on somebody else. Moses is like, what, what have me and Aaron got to do with this? You're angry at the Lord, but you're taking it out on us. And I think a lot of times, you know, we do that, right? Why do we do that? We do that because we just vent or because we feel comfortable with the person or we just want to blame somebody else or we just want to, you know, throw people under the bus. It's your fault. It's this. But we never want to show our true colors. Maybe it's something we did or didn't do. But here we go. They came. And I want to, let me go back a minute. I want you all to remember that this is not a group of 20 people. The, is, these people that were delivered out of Egypt, they were, I read in some commentary, there were millions of people, okay? This was a bunch of people. Now, these are a bunch of people complaining. <laughs> I, I don't know how Moses did it. I really don't. I mean, this guy had a lot of patience. I mean, there are some times you read, and it's almost kind of comical to some degree because you hear the Lord being angry with the Israelites because they didn't listen, but then you hear Moses praying for them, and then in the reverse, then you hear Moses like, they're your people. <laughs> you gave them to me, you know, and it's it's back and forth thing, and I think a lot of times we don't think about how when we are complaining that we put pressure on other people, right? How many of y'all like hanging around people that are negative all the time, right? They just, woof, they make you want to get up and go. No, they don't. It's enough to make you want to kill them or yourself because it's like it, it gets overwhelming, right? So here poor Moses, he's like, okay, I'm going to go talk to the Lord. And the Lord told him, this is what you do, and I'm going to. So he tells the people that the Lord in the morning, he's going to bring bread down. He says, and Moses says, you shall see when the Lord gives you meat to eat that evening and in the morning the bread will be full for he hears your complaints against him. <laughs> so here we go. We're just saying, you know, Moses is saying, God hears you. He knows what you're, what you're complaining about. Move on down to verse 11. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, I have heard the complaints of the children of Israel. Speak to them saying, at twilight you shall have eat meat and in the morning you shall have be filled with bread, and when you and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. Okay, so the Lord's again, he's just telling them, I'm gonna provide for them, and they're gonna see that I am their God and I will provide for them. So he goes on to say, So it was so it was that quail came upon the evening and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew laid around the camp, and when the layers of the dew lifted, there was on the surface of the wilderness a small round substance, as fine as as fine as frost on the ground. So when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Well, that what is it is called manna. He gave them bread and quail and meat. So there was quail all around. 
And when the dew had lifted, they saw these little round things of manna on the ground. Of course, they had never seen it before. So they were like, what is it? Did you know that that's what manna is? It means, what is it? Manna is, what is it? In their language, what is it? So we're going to have, what is it this morning? <laughs> no. so, we're, so they had it. So they were like, well, I don't know what that is, but let's try it. I'm thinking, wow, first of all, if I were to get up in the morning and I saw a bunch of dead bird lying around, no, I'm just kidding, that would be kind of freaky again, but there was the meat that the Lord provided for them, and not only that, but then he provided them something that they were like, what is that? Fell from heaven. So, he said, eat it, that's what you're going to get. So, so it was, so that the children who came, they got it. <clears throat> And Moses said to them, this is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Let every man gather it according to each one's need. One omer for each person according to the number of persons. Let everyone take for those who are in their tent. Okay, so now he's telling them because the Lord had told them already that they're supposed to get up and gather enough for them to eat. And he specified how much they were supposed to take. So... He's telling them now. <clears throat> so they're going to gather this food now, right? And they're going to take it to their homes, like going to the grocery store, right? You go and you get what you need, and you take it to your house, and you feed your family members. So here we go. <laughs> Again, keep in mind, this is not a group of 30. This is millions of people. And these are Israelites. These are some Egyptians that have came. There are a mixture of people there. Because when they escaped Egypt, some of the people that were not Jewish went with them because they began to follow their beliefs. So they, some, there were some there with them as well. So there was a mixture of cultures there, so everybody was going. So the Lord fed everybody. So <clears throat> here they are. So they're getting it, and they got it, and they're like, woo, 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 we got quail. Mm. And this, what is it? Whatever it is, this, I'm going to eat it. it. looks good. Guess we have it. This is my bread. Bread and chicken. Well, it's like waffles and chicken, I guess, right? Fried chicken and waffles. Has anybody ever had that? I have never had it. Oh, is it good? I don't know. It looks good when I see the commercials. I think, hmm, that sounds, looks good. Well, this, I guess this is their way. Actually, they had honey, too. So can you imagine putting it on drizzling on top? Oh, I bet it sounded, mm, tasted yummy. So anyway, so this is their chicken and waffles. <clears throat> so, so they gathered. So the children did so. And then you read on to 17. Then the children of Israel so gathered some more, some less, some when the measure it by its armor, he had gathered much and had nothing left over, and he who gathered little had no lack. Every man had gathered according to each one's need. Then Moses said, let no one leave any until morning. Notwithstanding, they did. They did not heed Moses. Here we go. We're saying, Moses is saying, get what you need. So some got more than they needed, and some didn't. Some got just what they needed, so they had none left over. But some didn't listen. Isn't that like some of us? You tell them, okay, look, don't do this. You can do this, but don't do this. What do some people do? They do this, right? They're like, they don't know. I'm hungry. I'm going to eat. I'm going to get what's mine. Because I'm not going to go hungry again. Because the last time, the Lord took forever to bring us some food, and I almost died. Right? That's how we feel sometimes. We're like, uh-uh. I'm not giving you what I have. Are you kidding me? I worked hard for this. I sweat. <clears throat> I worked 12 hours. And I got, and you need, mm -mm, go get you a job. Right? We don't want to share because we're like, this is mine. Well, people were getting sent you with things that weren't even theirs, really, only. But the Lord was providing for them. But they felt obligated that they needed to get more than they needed to. Greed. <clears throat> so, Moses was angry with them. We read on. Verse 20, he says, Notwithstanding, they did not heed Moses, but some of them left part of it until morning. 
And it bred worms and stank. Oh, that's nice. Mm, lovely. You just want to eat it now, right? That'll teach you. They said, oh, we're going to get extra. Nobody will know. We'll eat it, and we'll have it for the next day, and then we'll get more. Oh, yeah. What the Lord? <laughs> the Lord was like, hmm, you think so? Watch this. They get up in the morning to go get their little nibble or in the middle of the night or whatever, and it had worms. Not only that, but it stank. It stunk. Blah. Okay, garbage. Have you ever smelled it when it gets really bad? And it's, I'm one of those people that have really sensitive nose. Don't throw up in front of me because I will be throwing up with you. I cannot handle that smell. It's just, oh. I have one of those really weak stomachs. When my daughter was small, my poor husband, every time she'd throw up, I'd have to call him, but she threw up. <laughs> and he'd go over there and clean it because I'd be like, oh. He's like, Sandra, stop. You know, because I just don't have the stomach for that or anything that smells bad. I just, ooh. So I can imagine trying to eat something that stinks. I mean, this is stank, okay? It didn't say stink. It stank. So that means it stunk bad, okay? You know, it could have said something like, oh, I had a bad smell. No, it stunk. So, he, they, so they couldn't even eat it. So they took all that time to gather more just for it to go to waste. How many of y'all go grocery shopping? Come on, let's be honest. We buy food, we buy fruit, and it goes bad. We didn't eat it, did we? I hate that, especially bananas. They go bad so fast. If you don't eat them, they're rotten, right? They go bad, and they're just there, or any other kind of fruit. And I always tell my husband, why don't we buy fruit? We don't ever eat it. <laughs> we need to eat it. We're supposed to eat it because it's healthy for us. Everything that we want, sometimes it's good for us. We don't eat. But anyways, so I'm, 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 I'm going off the trail here. But my point is, is that sometimes we get things and we waste them, correct? Am I the only one that does that? Okay, good. I was going to feel bad. I just couldn't confess. <laughs> no, but I just thought sometimes it's horrible. I hate it. But anyways, okay, so now then he said, so when they gathered every morning, every man according to his need, and when, he, when the sun came up, <laughs> became hot, it melted. Okay, not only if it didn't have worms and stunk, it, had, it melted. You're like, what the? Right? <laughs> like, can you imagine? You're just walking in, and then all of a sudden, start, start like trying to peel it off of the paper or whatever they have. Like, you're scooping it. I don't know. I mean, I can't. I don't know what it looked like. I can't imagine. But that's what it says. It melted. It doesn't sound appetizing to begin with, right? Okay. Would you want to eat it if it stuck or had worms or melted? No. Uh. Uh. So anyway, so it says on the sixth day. That's when they gathered twice as much bread. So now the Lord had told them before. The first time you get what you need. Now, on the sixth day, get twice as much. Now he's telling them to get twice as much. This is when they're supposed to get what there was more than enough. But they didn't do that. So then he says, and the rulers, and so when they came, the, they gathered. Okay, so what is this? That, ah, sorry. This is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is the Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what, is, what you will bake today and boil what you would boil and lay it up for yourselves. All the remains to be kept until morning and lay it up until the morning as Moses commanded and it did not stink nor were there any worms in it. Then Moses said, eat that today for today for it is the Sabbath to the Lord. Today you would not find in the field Okay, so the sixth day they gathered it for the seventh. So that was the whole point. Okay, the seventh day is a holy day, correct? It's the day of rest. So on the sixth day, they were supposed to gather twice as much so that they would have enough to last for the seventh day on the Sabbath. Is that clear? You understand now? Okay, so he said, because now, <laughs> I can imagine they were kind of afraid now. They were like, oh, no, I'm not going to get much because it's going to go bad. But he told them, no, if, now if you do it, it won't stink, it won't get worms, and it won't melt. It won't do what it just did to you this morning because now the Lord is telling you this is what you do. A lot of times, 
We want to do things on our own will, our own way, our own time, and then it doesn't work out. But God says, wait on me. When I tell you, then you do it. How many of y'all know that that's better? It won't stink. It won't rot away. It won't fall apart. A lot of times we want to do things and we're like, oh, I know. I have, a deci- I, have to, I, mean, I have to make a decision. But you know what? I'm just going to do what I think I know is the best thing to do. How many of you know that is the worst decision you could have ever made? Oh, I do it. I've done it. And God's saying, did you pray about it? Did you come to me about it? Did you ask me? You know, remember, God's timing is not our time, right? How many of y'all know that? We want it to be our time. We want it now. Kind of like they wanted their food now. They wanted to get it. They wanted to hog it. They wanted to store it. They wanted to. It's all the way they wanted to do it. What was the first thing that God said to Moses? Let's see what they would do. He's testing them. Are they passing? I think they're failing. (laughs) Some of them at least. You know, sometimes we do things and the Lord is testing us. He's saying, well, let's see. What are you going to do? Do we get impatient? Yes. We're like, this, is, this must be what God meant because surely he knows what I need. And I need it now. And I need this much of it. How many of us want responsibilities that we can handle? How many of us want to get rich and win the lottery? Right? We want it, we want it, a lot of it. But the Lord says, no, I know what will happen if you got that. A lot of people think, wow, why doesn't any of this happen to me? Why can't I ever get it? Don't you know the Lord knows? We think, we're like, oh, Lord, if I won the lottery, I would give to the church. (laughs) They would be the first people that I give to, the Lord. Lord, I promise if I win, I will give you my 10%. Mm -hmm. And then I'll help the poor people. I'll go to the orphanages. Oh, I'll help Miss Smith, who's sick. And not only that, but I know that my mom is in need or my brother needs this or something. Or I know somebody, you know, we're thinking of all the people, right, that is going to make us look so good. And the God's going to say, oh, of course you are. Okay. You know what? You're going to win the lottery next week. Go buy you a ticket. Then you get it. And you're like, woohoo, Vegas, here I come. Go buy a new car. Get you a new house. Go shopping on shopping spree, right? What happened to the church? What happened to your, you know, the orphanage? What happened to the poor orphans? You know, right? All of that goes, <laughs> I don't think it's the first thing. I'm not saying all people. Okay, I, I, I'm not going to put us all in the same boat. Some of us would probably do it. But the Lord knows is my point that I'm trying to make here. He knows your heart. He knows what your intentions are. He knows you better than you know yourself. So here they go back to this, and he says, go ahead and gather for the next day, for the next day is holy, and you're not to do anything. I want you to rest. So they were supposed to get the food enough for them to eat for the sixth day and then have some for the next day when they got up because it was going to be still fine. Nothing was going to be wrong with food to eat, and they won't have to go gather any more food. They won't have to do nothing but rest like the Lord intended us to do. Now, I'm going to say something that you're like, well, I, I mean, because my husband does it. Nowadays, it's kind of hard to do that. Work on Sundays. People have to work on Sundays. And that's a given, but that's because that's just the way it is, not because they want to. But a lot of times, the Lord asks us to rest in his presence, right? Take a day off. Spend time with him. That's what he wants us to do. 
no, we are pounding this feeling. We're like, I need money. I need to get rich. I need to have all this money. I'm just going to do what I got to do. And if I don't do it, it'll not get done. I won't have this. I won't have that. Where's your faith? Where's your trust? So these people obviously weren't trusting the Lord to provide for them again. Some of them. And how do I know that? Because if you read on, go verse 27. It says, now it happened that some of the people went back out on the seventh day to gather, but they found none. Isn't that just like us? Don't do this, but you can do that. Moses told them. What did they do? Probably because they ate it all on the sixth day and didn't have any for the seventh, so they went, let's go back out there and get some more. There was none. Oy. Right? That's probably what the Lord is thinking. How many times do I have to tell you? Gee, Moses is probably going... I told them. Didn't listen. But what happens? That greedy bone in you goes, I'm going to get more. (laughs) I want more. I need more. I say greedy. I don't know. What would you call it? A lot of times we don't listen. We think, well, if I do it this way, well, if I... How many of us don't learn a lesson? Oh, um, I'll admit it. I'll raise my hand. I didn't learn my lesson many a times. You know, she sang one of my favorite songs this morning. When he talks about when I think about the Lord, how he filled me, how he changed me, how he healed me, how he turned my life around. When I became a Christian, for the first time I gave my life to the Lord, that song rang true to my ears. And I've given my testimony before that I was not going down a good road. And when I think about what the Lord has done, it did make me want to shout. When I do shout, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know what he saved me from. So when I hear that song, it does get me excited because I have to remember. Were they remembering what the Lord just did for them? He took them out of Egypt. He set them free. They were in bondage. I was in bondage. They were thinking about, oh, if you read on further down, they still don't learn. How many times, if you read the Old Testament, how many times the Israelites always wanted to revert back to where they came from? Slavery, being in chains, oh, the good old days, (laughs) right? They think it was good because they were provided for with food, a shelter, but were they really free? They were treated like slaves. They were put to work. They had to work for everything. They were mistreated. But they want that when they're in need. Oh, I remember when. You know, I I think back to when we had, I think it was in Leviticus, or they go down to read, and they start talking about again when they were, oh, I remember when we used to have honey and all that fruit. And that water and all that good stuff. You remember when we used to go partying? Remember when we went to that club? Remember when we would drink all night and get crazy? Woo! Remember we had so much fun? We stayed out till midnight. I mean, midnight. Oh. <laughs> we stayed out till 3 in the morning, 6 in the morning. You remember? You remember? You remember? Right? When we're feeling bad and we're thinking nothing's going right, darn it, I had more fun when I was out there in the world than I do now. Now I'm supposed to be a Christian. You know, well, what is God doing for me? Look at me. Look where I'm at. Do 
Well, that's what the Israelites, I'm hungry, I'm starving. He just barely gave me enough to eat for two days, three days, a week, whatever. And it's only been a month since they left Egypt. A couple of months, maybe, at the most. And they're whining already, and they're complaining. And they're thinking about when they were slaves, how good it was. I don't know, but when I was first saved, after I got that, and the Lord turned my life around, it, I, was, woo, I was on fire for the Lord for a long time. It wasn't until you get later in the years, right? Then you become kind of stagnant. And you're like, okay, I've done this, I've done that, I've done this, I've done that. Okay, oh, now I'm just here. Nothing's happening. Guess the Lord don't hear me no more. I don't know. Guess he forgot about me. I don't know. Excitement's gone. She's dead. Right? Or is it just me feels like that sometimes? I'm honest, okay? I'm going to be I'm One thing, when I talk, I'm honest. And when I preach the words, I, I'm preaching to myself. A lot of times, that's basically what I'm doing. That's where I get my message, because I'm like, this is for me. I'm not going to lie. I'm human. I'm not going to pretend like everything is all good all the time. It's not. It's not. But I remember when, though. And that's what gets me back on track. I start thinking, you know what, Lord? I remember, Lord. And I know you're faithful. So it happened. So when they went, there was none there. <laughs> and the Lord... You read on, this is, and the Lord said to Moses, how long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my law? See that the Lord has given you the Sabbath, therefore he gives you on the sixth day bread, and for two days let every man remain in his place, let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So he tells them again. So well, he's just reminding them. So I'm like, He's like, how long? How many times is the Lord going to have to do things for you? For you to have that faith to say, he's not going to leave me. He's never going to leave me or forsake me. They were set. They, were, they went through the Red Sea. He gave him water from a tree that he waved around. He did so many things for them. He rained down manna and quail. Yet they're like, I'm ringing up here. Is that natural? And I'm thinking, these are, th these are things that they had done. He had done for them, and yet they still are complaining and worried. And I'm thinking, how many times, the Lord says, how many times? But this showed me how much grace the Lord has. This is the Old Testament. <laughs> you know that the Old Testament, God, if he lost his patience, it wasn't going <laughs> to... You know, you're zap, you're gone, right? I'm thinking, wow, that just showed the patience of my God and the mercy that he had, that he would just give them quail that was just all over, abundance. Remember, there were millions of people. Think about how much, just, just, Give me a second here. Just think about, okay, there were millions of people. They had to have bread for, I mean, and quail and bread for that day, plus the sixth, up to the sixth day, and then double again on that sixth day for the seventh day. Millions of people. For them to eat all day and to have plenty of, okay? It wasn't like, okay, you only get one leg, a chicken leg, one per day. I mean, No. They could eat what they wanted to eat as long as they ate it all. That was the only requirement. Just don't have any left over. That's it. 
if you can eat a 20 bucket piece chicken, then get you a 20 bucket piece chicken for yourself. But just eat it all. Don't leave any, because if you leave it, it's going to stink it. So think about how much quail that must have been on the floor plus manna. That's what you call abundance. Hello? Did y'all hear what I just said? It's an abundance. That means my Lord gives us an abundance. He didn't say one chicken for you, one chicken for you, one chicken. I say chicken. It's quail. But he didn't say no. He no. He said get what you need. Get what you want. Get what well, he said. He called it a, um, what was it, a, an arm or whatever. It was, I don't guess it's, well, I don't know how much that is. But it didn't matter. It was enough for them to have for their household. And a lot of times we think, oh, Lord, we put limits on him. Ugh, this is a kind of a, oh, God, I'm going to pray for this. I know it's a little asking a little bit too much. But, God, if you can do it, that'd be great. Right? I was, I, I heard him, I heard one of these, let me see who it was. I heard one of these pastors mention this guy. His, he, I think his, his name was Louis Ginsburg. And he had, um, he wanted to know what did manna taste like. And he said that there was a Jewish legend that said that, <clears throat> that the manna would taste like whatever that age appropriate was. Like for babies, he said that it would taste like milk when they had it. Because it was what they desired. It's what they wanted. It's what they needed. For youth, maybe it's good tasting buttery bread i don't know what youth like to eat what do you like to put on your bread butter and jelly and i don't know for old men it was like honey and oil on their or sweet tastes of oil and then for the sick it was like barley something healthy that they needed for their bodies but for the gentiles that didn't believe it was bitter What do you need? When you have manna, what is your body needing? Do you need a healing? Is it going to be healthy for your body? Is it going to taste good? Is it going to give you all you need, all the nutrition you need for your body to make you healthy in your mind, in your spirit? Maybe you need milk for your bones to get strong, to get strength, to strengthen your faith. Maybe you're just a beginner in the word, and maybe you're still learning. And you just want to drink something that's just going to be nutritious, healthy, strengthen your walk. What is it that you need? What are you looking for? What do you want the Lord to provide for you? What is it? You know, the Lord would give it to you. He gives it to you. He knows what you need. He knows what's going to be best for you. Say, Lord, I need a I need a touch. I'm hurting. I've given up. I don't have any hope. I'm confused. Or maybe I need a healing in my body cuz I've been sick lately and I just can't get through this. I can't get over this. I'm just not feeling good. Or maybe financially, I'm just like, Lord, I need money because I can't make it. You see the cost of living nowadays, it's crazy. Or maybe you're just lonely and you need love and you're feeling insecure and wanted and loved. Maybe you have an addiction and you need to be set free. You're like, Lord, I'm trying to quit this habit and I can't stop it. I'm just, I'm addicted and I need your help, Lord. It doesn't matter. The Lord knows what it is already and he can help you with it. But you know what? You have to be able to do it. You have to want to do it. And I read this other thing that I thought was pretty interesting that went with this. And I thought, oh, 
Yeah, I'm on a roll here with these things. I started thinking and looking, and I heard this, and I thought, this is perfect. Manna from heaven. How it represents Jesus. You know, everything's about Jesus, right? It all, Old Testament, New Testament, Testament, it leads back to Jesus. So when manna came from heaven, it was like Jesus came from heaven. These are the similarities. It was supernatural. Jesus is supernatural, right? His birth was supernatural. It wasn't a natural birth. It was small and tiny. Jesus came to us as a baby. Small. And it fell at night, so when they woke up in the morning, Jesus came at night. He was born in a manger at night. And it said it was round and had no end. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. No end. It was pure and white, just like Jesus. And he makes our sins pure and white. Amen? I thank the Lord for that. <laughs> and then they named it, what is it? People think that about Jesus. Who is he? Right? What is this Jesus? He is the bread and the life. Amen? He is the, un, he is the unrecognizable for those. And I also said that it was sweet as honey. And I thought, the word is sweet as honey. Our salvation is sweet. How many of you know that when you got saved, that's so sweet, right? Amen. When you think about your salvation, how sweet is that to think about what he's saving us from? Again, I refer back to that song, how he saved me, how he turned my life around, how he placed my feet on solid ground. He saved me. What, did he, what does that mean? He saved me. He saved you from what? Do you even know? I've talked about this too. I said, they don't know. He saved you from the wrath that's to come on this earth for a judgment in hell. You don't have to go through that. I'm excited. He saved me from that. That there is enough for me. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. And this is the Jew fell, and the, the manna fell on Jew. It didn't touch the ground, neither did Jesus. He came into the earth, but he was not of this earth. Wow. I think about, it says more manna fell Manna was, was where they were. It fell where they were. It didn't, they didn't have to go hike a mile, 10 miles down the camp to go get the manna. It was right there. Do you know Jesus comes right here? When you need it, he's right here. You don't have to go look for it. You don't have to go, I'm, we're not going to send you down to Austin to go find Jesus. He's right here. And you know what, though? They had to, not only that, but they had to get down and get it. Bend down, pick up the manna to receive it. Do you know you literally have to get up off your seat sometimes or stand up or make a confession? You have to take action of some sort to get it. It's not just going to fall on top of you, and enter you magically. You have to do something. Jesus is here today for you to get it today. 
It was there present that day for them. Why are you going to wait when Jesus is freely here for you to get it today? Fresh, anointing. Woo! You need your need met today? Why are you going to wait? Why are you going to wait to receive Jesus? Oh my gosh. I remember uh, growing up and we would go to those revivals. Now, <laughs> I grew up in a, I guess it was kind of a Pentecostal Assemblies of God kind of type thing that you would get excited and they'd have those revival and people would be running down the aisle and they'd be raising their hands and they would be going. When they would call for the altar, people would come running. When was the last service y'all went to that y'all, some people were running down this aisle to come to the, have y'all seen it? Good, sister. That's exciting. We all need to have that. It should be every day, every Sunday. Not just, oh, yeah, I went to one about a week ago. Really? A week ago, that's when somebody was excited about receiving Christ? A week ago? At one church, wherever she went. That's sad. Not excited. They're not hungry. Oh, I know, that was bad. Are we hungry? Are you excited? I don't know. I can't tell. I'm serious. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go there. Okay, I'm going to say it. I told you I was honest. Let's see. Worship. How excited were we? I know. You're like, Sandra, stop. You're stepping on my toes. You're hurting me. Hey, guys. This is what it is. I'm going to, I'm going to be honest with you because that's what I do. You want to say you're excited about the Lord? You want to be here. You're on fire for the Lord. You love him. Show it. Why do we have to coach people into doing things? Why do we have to coach you to do anything? If it's in you, you do it. If you love the Lord, you do it. If you need it, you get it. Why is it something that we have to sit there and say, oh, would you please, everybody, please just stand up. Everybody raise your hands. Everybody sing. Everybody come up here. Why? Why? I know I'm not the only one thinking that. I'm sure God's sitting up there going, oh, they love me. I know, you're like, when's Sally coming back? <laughs> and she, take it up with her. She'll be back in a couple of weeks. I'm just saying. I don't mean to, well, see, I, <laughs> I hate to even say this. I don't mean to offend anybody because if it hurts, I'm sorry. It's, that's the problem today. Don't offend people. You offended me. You hurt my feelings. Oh my gosh, pastors are not going to let me talk next Sunday. Hey, if I don't say it, I don't know. Then y'all are going to go around thinking that y'all are okay. I mean, y'all may be okay. Maybe that's just the way you are, and that's okay. But, gosh, I just wish we could just get excited. I really do. And I know the Lord is thinking the same thing. <laughs> when are my people going to get excited? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I'm like, ugh. Oh. We're going to celebrate. We're going to have a day of celebration. Get, I, don't, I know I'm being a little rough and a little hard. I know that we could be going through something. And I'm not, I'm not 
taking it from anybody who's maybe having a hard time, who has maybe gone through something. But you know what? That those are the times when we're supposed to really press in. That's when you seek the Lord. That's when you give him your all is when you're hurting. What does it say? When I am weak, he is strong. We need to press forward. Press on. Don't give in. Don't let the enemy take over. Don't let him have that control. Don't give him that. Don't go back to those days. Remember, you're free. You're set free. The Lord has set us free. Woo! Free to worship. Free to holler. Yes, thank you, Lord. I'm free. I don't have to worry about anybody coming in. Who's going to make me an example here in front of all of y'all if y'all say something? Isn't that sad that in other countries, that's exactly what they'll do, except they'd line us all up and take us outside and make us an example. I don't have to worry about that. And that's something to be excited about. And if you need something, ask him. The Lord is good. He's faithful. I mean, we complain about it. But you know what? God is so forgiving and merciful. He says, you know what? Okay, you're, I hear you complaining. I hear you're upset. I know you are here. And you wake up in the morning and there it is. Don't you feel bad? You're like, oh, I'm sorry. I've done that. I've done that a lot. I'll be like, oh, God, what? <laughs> and then next thing he does, I'm like, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. <laughs> you know, right? Because we were like, we feel bad because then we complain. And God was like, if you would have just waited. But we were impatient and we didn't want to wait. And I'm guilty of that. So we're going to finish with this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I'm thinking. All right, so then... Um, he, he goes on and says, And Moses said to Aaron, Take a pot and put it in the armor of manna in it and lay it up. I'm, verse, I'm sorry, brother. It's in verse 33. And Moses said to Aaron, Take a, take a pot and put an armor of manna in it and lay it up before the Lord to be kept before your generations as the Lord commandeth Moses. So Aaron laid it up before the testimony to, keep, to be kept. And the children of Israel ate manna for 40 years until they came into the inhabited land. They ate manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. Now the Omer is one-tenth of an ephah. So they put this stuff in to remember. And now he told him to do this. This was the commandment. He said, oh, I go back to 32. It says, Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Fill the armor up and keep it for your generations, that they may see the bread with which I fed you in the wilderness when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. So this was to be a reminder. The manna was to be a reminder for all generations that this is what he did for them when he delivered them out of the land of Egypt. So they were to remember. We're about to take communion, and we're supposed to remember. We're going to take communion and while we're taking communion, remember. What has the Lord done for you? What is he to you? What has he done for you? He went to the cross for me. Amen. He took my sins for me. He's healed me. He's provided for me. He's protected me. He's done everything for me. And I remember so we go before the Lord and we take part of this manna. Remember how he's set you free, how he's delivered you. Are you grateful? One day the Lord's going to come back. We're going to be with the Lord and we're going to eat with him again. Ha! So excited. I am so excited. I can't wait. Yeah. And I'm thinking, of, I've talked to the youth about this. I thought, you know, can you imagine what the food's going to taste like in heaven? I mean, not that we'll need to eat it because we really probably won't really need to eat. But I'm just saying, can you imagine what real food tastes like? Oh, my gosh. What a real strawberry tastes like. 
or peach or apple. We think we know what they taste like. Nah. No, we're going to have the real stuff with no genetics put in it or anything like that. It's just going to be natural, fresh food. It tastes so good. So whatever, when you take this manna, remember, what, do you, what is it to you? What is it that you need? That's what it's going to taste like for you. Amen? Amen. Did y'all get anything out of this? Or did I just gripe at y'all? I didn't mean to sound like I was griping at y'all. I wanted y'all to be encouraged to know that the Lord loves you. He will provide for you. He's not going to take you out of something and leave you. He's not going to bring you so far and then say, oh, that was it. I didn't tell you. I was only going to take you up to here, and then after that, you're on your own. No. I'll get you across the Red Sea. After that, good luck. Can you imagine? No, he didn't. He still provided for you. And even after they griped and complained and murmured and murmured. And then, and then later on, you know that they still do other stuff, right? They go off and worship another god. And then they gripe and complain and murmur some more. But God is so Even to this day, God still loves his people. And he's still doing for them awesome things. And he's going to do great things for them later. And you know what? But since we're grafted into the family now, he's doing great things for us now. Now. Yay. Aren't you excited? I'm excited. Praise the Lord. Oh, Lord. No, I'm kidding. Y'all get excited. Know that the Lord is good. Amen. All right. So we're going to get ready to take communion. And I want everybody to come. I'm going to do this. I'm going to tell you to come on up so we can get have the communion passed out. If anybody here, while we're coming up, before we take communion, I want to invite anybody who hey, maybe has not received the Lord but like to receive the Lord, maybe those listening as well, if you have not received the Lord and would like to, once everybody gets settled, we'll have a prayer of, um, of invitation to receive Christ into your life. Thank you, brother. receive the Lord in your life this morning you'd like to before we take you take communion we're going to say a quick prayer real quick say thank you Lord Father I ask you Lord to come into my life to be Lord of my life I confess that I'm a sinner and that I need to be forgiven Father I, I, I believe that you died and you rose again and you're coming back for me Lord, I ask you that you forgive me of my sins and that you come and live into my life. Lord, I receive you as my Savior. I believe you are on the right hand, sitting at the right hand of the throne. And so, Lord, I pray that you would come into my life and be Lord of my life and take over. That you would help me, guide me, and direct me in all my ways. And I ask all these things in the name of Jesus. We So if you've received Christ, it was very easy. You just simply have to ask the Lord to come into your life. You know, the Lord says if you confess that he died and rose again, and you believe with all your heart that he's, he's done that and he's coming back for you, that you are saved, and you've confessed your sins before the Lord, it's that easy. 
So as we get ready to take communion, this is what he was talking about. This is the manna from heaven. Jesus is the one that fell from, from heaven and came down and gave his body, his life for us. If this is not something to get excited about, I'm glad I didn't wear my false lashes because I might start crying and they would have fell off and then it would have been awful. I almost did. But God is so good that he gave his body for me. This is what I get excited about. That one day, I'm going to be sitting with my Lord and Savior. If you need something this morning, and we get ready to take this piece of bread, if you need a healing, if you need deliverance, if you need finances, if you need, you know, just some hope, maybe you need an answer, maybe finances, whatever it is, let this be the sweet taste in your mouth, knowing that the Lord is faithful. He's not going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. He made a promise to us. He brought them out. He'll, brought, he'll bring you out. He'll bring you out. If he's done a miracle for you before, he'll do it again. But we don't look to miracles as a way of staying with the Lord. Those are just benefits. The greatest miracle is that he died for us and he came. But the Lord does it because he loves us and he's faithful. So we're going to read from 1 Corinthians. And he, when he had given thanks, he, break it, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank you, Lord, for their body. Thank you, Lord, for the body that was broken for me. Thank you, Lord, that you came to the cross, Father, that I may be healed. Lord, that I may be healed physically, emotionally, in any way, Father. I know, Father, you're faithful. And you took those stripes upon your back, Father, for me. And so, Lord, we just thank you for that. And we give you all the glory and all the honor. In the name of Jesus, let me take the bread. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper and said, This is the cup. This is a new covenant of my blood. Do this often as you drink it. Drink it in remembrance of me. As often as you eat this bread and this, drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the, bread, the blood that was shed for us. Father, the, for the body and blood that was shed for us, for the new covenant, Lord. Father, that you grafted me into your family. That I too, Lord, would be able to be gathered with you one day, Father. And that I have the privilege of having you help me and be with me and save me, Lord. That you would never leave me or forsake me, Lord. Thank you for this blood that was shed for me, Father. In the name of Jesus, you may take of the cup. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the body and blood that was shed for us. Father, I pray that this morning that anybody here, Lord, we are believing in faith, Father, that you're going to meet whatever need is here this morning, Father, whether it be physically, emotionally, financially. Lord, that you're going to meet the need, Father. And I thank you for what you're doing at this moment, Lord. I pray, dear God, that you would just be with us as we leave our separate ways this morning, Father, until we come back together at the appointed time, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your goodness, that you're a faithful Father. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Lord, I just want to thank those for watching. I if you've received the Lord, we pray that you would uh, send us a message. Let us know, and we'd be glad to send you a, a little booklet to help you with your walk with the Lord. And 
everybody here. Thank you once again for being here this morning. I pray that y'all all have a blessed day and I'll have a happy fourth. Woohoo! We're free. We're celebrating that. So enjoy and be safe. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody.